Hi everyone, it's Danielle. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Bitmoji virtual classroom using Google Slides. So I'm just going to show you my virtual classroom that I created and then I'm going to show you how to do your own virtual classroom using Google Slides and your Bitmoji. So I teach 8th grade ELA in New York City um, and so my virtual classroom is very literature based. Yours is going to look different. You can cater this to however you want, no matter what subject area you teach, no matter what grade level you teach, and you're going to make this virtual classroom your own just like you would do if we were really in school. So I'm just going to walk you through the elements that I've included in mine just to give you some ideas. So I do a lot of stuff with Project Lit, which is a group of educators and students that are committed to getting um, diverse and relevant literature into the hands of everybody everywhere. Um, they're a really cool organization. You should check them out. Um, right now they're doing their reveal for their list of books for next year's book clubs. So I thought it'd be cool for my students to follow along. So I linked their Twitter account to my virtual classroom. And um, I also like to share with my students when I'm reading. Um, so I included a link to what I'm reading right now, which is Dear Justice, the second book um, that follows Dear Martin, which our students are reading right now. Um, so up here is Dear Martin, and if you click on here, this links to the audio of the chapters that we're going to be reading soon. Down here, I have two titles, Secret Soldiers and Picture Us in the Light that are available for download from audiobooksync.com right now and they're doing something really cool also um, every week until the end of July they are releasing audiobooks downloadable for free so if that's something that interests you you should check that out as well um, and my students are aware of this too but I'm going to update this continually so that they can keep checking out the books um, and then lastly down here in the bookshelf um, I have a link to uh, Riveted Lit, and Simon Teen is also releasing YA titles for free download as well. I also linked my Google Classroom and my teacher Twitter and teacher Instagram accounts so my students can follow me there. And IXL, I linked here. It's a program we use in school that my students are familiar with. Um, down here it says you are awesome and if they click on it it's going to take them to a whole list of motivational videos that they can watch at, on their own. Um, you are awesome is across my front bulletin board front and center when my students are in my room and facing forward. That's what they see so I felt like this is a taste of home for them. And then over here is reading journal prompts that my students use once they read something and they're prompted to write about it. And then here on the whiteboard, I'm going to put whatever I want. Um, I can update this however I want. I can have it daily. I can have it weekly. I can have a checklist of students' uh, tasks to do. Whatever I want to put up here, I can link videos. I can link whatever I want up here. This is pretty much however I want to use it. And um, will be updated accordingly based on what I do based on what I want to do. So how do you do this for your own purposes? So you're going to go into Google Slides and you're going to start a new presentation. So I'm going to title this a virtual classroom and then I'm going to create a blank slide. So once I have my blank slide the world is my oyster, as they say. So I'm going to choose an image. I, I did that kind of quick, so let me go back. I went into background, choose image, Google image search. So what I'm going to look for is wall and floor background. Let's choose this one. Now, there's a whole bunch of them that come up. You can pick whatever you want. So we'll choose this one. And then now you have a background. You have your wall and your floor. So now this kind of looks like a room. So just like you get to school in September or August whenever you start school 
and you have a blank canvas to work with, that's what you have here. So let's say you definitely want a whiteboard. So you're going to go into insert, image, search the web, whiteboard. The third option is the one that I have in my classroom. And you can size this however you want. You can place it wherever you want in the room. It's truly up to you, whatever you want to do. This is how you can start off. Um, then let's say you want to put, I don't know, let's put this in over here in the middle. Or you want a couch. So you're going to go to image, search the web again, couch. And for any objects you want in your classroom, you want it to be a transparent background. Only so there's no like white box around the image. So here's my couch. Now it looks okay there, but maybe I want it here, or maybe I did want it there, but it's facing the wrong way, right? You would never put a couch there. So I'm going to go um, to arrange, rotate, flip horizontally, and my couch is now facing the way I would need it to in the room. So you can scale this however big or small you want it to be. Again, this is up to you. Now, how do you get your Bitmoji in there? You have to create a Bitmoji first. So you're going to go into Bitmoji. Now, if you don't have one, you need to create one, like I said. And you can do that on the App Store or Google Play, whichever one of those you use. And then on the internet, on the web here, it's going to ask you how you want to use it. You want to use it in Chrome. Now, I already have it, so that's why it says remove from Chrome. Once you're signed into your Bitmoji account, it's going to prompt you to add it to Chrome. You want to add it, and then you're going to get this little green box up here. You see it matches this, so that lets you know that Bitmoji is installed into your Google Chrome. So... You want to add your, add your Bitmoji. Let's say you want to sit on the couch. You would just type in sitting. And you would right click on the Bitmoji. Come down here to the slideshow. Right click. Now again, the Bitmoji is facing the wrong way. You're going to click on arrange again. You're going to rotate it, flip horizontally. Now she's sitting the right way. And again, you can scale it so that it makes sense and fits correctly. Now, let's say I want a bookshelf again. Insert, search the web, bookcase. Again, transparent. Let's say I want this bookshelf because it matches the floor nicely. And you'd place it wherever you want. Now, I put book covers in my bookshelf. How did I do that? Well, I took a screenshot of those items and I saved them into my computer. So you'd go into upload from computer for any images you saved. And again, you're going to size them however you want. And then if you want to hyperlink this, you make sure that this is still selected. You see how there's the blue background around it? And then you would insert link and copy and paste the link that wherever you want to take this to. So, it, for example, I have the audio for a couple chapters here. I copy and paste that link to this image and then when my students go to click on it it'll take them wherever I want it to go. How do you write, write on the whiteboard is you would insert a text box and just like you would format any fonts you would do the same here so you could center this you can make it larger, you can change the font around, whatever you want to do. Um, and then you can make you can make this your own. Um, you can add anything you want. You can add plants. I've seen people add clocks, um, maps, clock, 
But again, make sure you're choosing a transparent background, otherwise you're gonna get that white box around it. And then you would just add whatever it is you want. If you're an elementary school teacher, this is a you can set up centers like you would in your classroom for each subject that you have to teach. Um, there's re there's really no limits with this. This is your own classroom in your own digital space and you can do this however you want. Now, you have to share this with your students. So the easiest way to do this is to go into file and download this as a PDF document. So once you do that, you're going to go into classroom. You're going to go into your class. You go into assignment, our virtual classroom. Hey everyone, check out our virtual classroom. And then you would add the file. So you would add, you would add your PDF, you would upload it, And then your students can view this as a PDF. Now, the reason you want to keep this as a PDF and not just share the Google Slideshow is because if you just share this slideshow in your Google Classroom rather than doing the PDF, your students can move all of these things around. The only thing that is um, static right now is your background because it's your background. But everything else would be movable. And if you give kids access to move everything around it's going to be a mess for them and you want to keep it you know nice and neat and the way you designed it so the pdf doesn't allow them to move anything but it will still allow them to click on the hyperlinks so that's how you make a virtual classroom and include your bitmoji using google slides if you have any questions or you need help with this, please let me know. I'd appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And good luck everybody with our remote learning and we're all in this together and we'll get through it. Bye.